The FitV GT5 Pro Max is yet another smartwatch claiming that it can test your blood glucose non-invasively. No finger pricks, no sensors on your body, just this bad boy on your wrist. The company that makes the watch sent it to me and asked me to test it, but they didn't pay me to make this video, which shows they must be pretty confident about this product. So let's find out if reliable non-invasive glucose monitoring is finally here or if it's just another scam. Here is what we're going to do. I'll be comparing the blood sugar readings from the watch to the readings from my blood glucose meter and my glucose sensor to see how accurate they are. I'll also explain the key pros and cons of each testing method as well as how much it's going to cost you. Let's run the first test. The glucometer reads 77 mg per deciliter. The sensor reads 87 and the watch reads 74 mg per deciliter. That looks really promising. But one accurate reading from the watch is not enough to convince me. I'm going to run a 7-day experiment and test my glucose at least 12 times a day in various life situations to find out how reliable the readings from this watch really are. So I just wrapped up day one of testing and you won't believe how accurate this smartwatch was today. I checked right after waking up, before and after every meal, during my workout in the gym and even in the middle of the night. All 12 readings I took were within reasonable range. Most of them were very close, if not spot on. But I think I might have made the first day a little bit too easy for the watch because I didn't let my blood sugar spike too high or drop too low and too hypo. I kept things really steady, basically as close as I could get to a typical healthy person's glucose profile. But tomorrow I'm planning to let my blood sugar run a little wilder to see how the watch handles it. Before we get to day two, let me explain how each of these three tools actually measures your glucose and how much it costs. The old school blood glucose meter is literally the only way you can test your true blood sugar at home. It's because you need to prick your finger and draw actual blood. Glucometer is also considered the most accurate way to test your blood sugar at home. And you get the results within seconds, which is great. The meter I use cost around 20 bucks, but the test strips are not cheap, about a dollar per every reading. But the main drawback of using an old school meter is that it only gives you point in time readings. So you can see the glucose trend or how fast your blood sugar is changing. By the way, pretty much all glucose meters that you can buy online or in a pharmacy are FDA cleared. Remember that. Next up, we have a glucose sensor, which works completely differently. Instead of pricking your finger, you apply it on your arm. Each sensor has a tiny filament that slides under the skin and takes glucose readings from the interstitial fluid, which is basically the fluid under your skin. So it's still an invasive way to measure your glucose, just not directly from blood. The real power of using a glucose sensor is that you have a continuous flow of real-time data. You know exactly where your glucose is going and how fast it is moving, 24-7. These glucose sensors are definitely Definitely not cheap. A monthly supply of biosensors cost about $100, and if you self-fund a true CGM, you end up paying even more. But the huge amount of data and knowledge you get from the sensors still make it a good deal, at least in my opinion. And again, pretty much all glucose sensors you can buy are FDA clear. I'll explain why this is so important in a minute. Now let me show you how the smartwatch measures glucose, because I'm sure this is the reason why most of you are here. The watch has a sensor built into the back. It's basically a chip that claims it can read your blood sugar without penetrating your skin. When you put the watch on and activate the glucose measuring feature, it takes about 10 to 15 seconds for the watch to do its thing. And then the glucose reading pops up on the screen. I wasn't quite able to figure out what exact technology the watch is using to get to my real-time glucose readings. But I quite like the simple interface, which is very similar to the glucose sensor app I showed you earlier. When you have the watch on, the glucose number updates every five minutes and it shows you a glucose graph for the day, which gets updated in real time. As long as you keep the watch on. Now what's cool about this watch is that it costs about 130 bucks, but you just pay once. There's no subscription and there are no refills. You buy it once and in theory you can measure your glucose levels forever, as long as the watch doesn't fall apart. But unlike most blood glucose meters or glucose sensors, this watch has never been evaluated by the FDA for accuracy or safety. In fact, the regulator issued a warning for consumers, saying that no smartwatch is authorized to measure blood glucose and people living with diabetes should not rely on them for any medical decisions. But to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the FDA. And when it comes to my diabetes, I prefer to do my own research and make my own decisions 
on how to measure my blood sugar. I just finished day three of testing and things are starting to get pretty interesting. I've noticed that whenever my blood glucose is stable and within that normal healthy range of 70 and 140 milligrams per deciliter, the watch is doing a pretty good job. Most of the readings land within a reasonable difference of both my blood glucose meter and my glucose sensor. And when I say a reasonable, I'm talking about roughly plus minus 20%, which is a range that I find acceptable for any kind of continuous glucose monitoring. But I also noticed that whenever I eat a high carb meal and spike sharply outside of this range, the watch starts to struggle. Look at this. It's about an hour after a big lunch and my blood glucose meter reads 188. The glucose sensor reads 190. And from the graph, we can clearly see that my glucose has been rising fast during the last 30 minutes. But the watch doesn't catch the spike. It only shows 124 and the watch reading never goes above 130 milligrams per deciliter. Although my actual glucose after lunch was almost 200. And here's another interesting example. Actually, this one was a bit scary. Yesterday, I went for a walk and as I was walking, I started to feel really weak. So I stopped to check my blood sugar and my blood glucose meter was reading 47 milligrams per deciliter. That's actually quite severe hypoglycemia. And if I didn't eat my glucose tablets right away, the whole situation could have become very dangerous. Now the glucose sensor alerted me about the hypo too. It was reading 53 and from the CGM graph, we can clearly see that my glucose plummeted during the last 30 minutes before the low happened. I probably had a bit too much insulin on board when this happened. But here is what's scary. As you can see, the watch didn't quite catch this steep drop. In fact, it was showing 112 and never went below 100 milligrams per deciliter. That low blood sugar incident was a bit concerning for me. And during the next couple of days, it started to become even more obvious that whenever my glucose changes quickly or drifts out of the normal range, the watch just can't keep up. But what I discovered on day five really shocked me. I wanted to take a closer look at my glucose graph over the last few days. And I started by checking the graphs from my glucose sensor. As you can see, when I scroll through, each day looks a bit different, just like real glucose should because my blood sugar doesn't follow the exact same pattern every day. If it did, I wouldn't need to test it, right? Now let's compare that to the smartwatch. I opened the app, went through the exact same time frame, and something felt off right away. The daily graphs were almost identical. Every single night shows perfectly stable glucose. Then a big spike to about 130 between 8 and 9 a.m. and two smaller bumps at 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. Isn't that a little too perfect? It's almost like the watch already knew my schedule, right? And what's even more suspicious is that the spikes line up perfectly with the time when most people eat breakfast, lunch and dinner. How convenient. But I don't want to accuse the company of cheating or trying to scam people. So let's do one more experiment. It's day 6, 9 a.m. I didn't eat any breakfast. I just got back from a quick run. So I'd be very surprised if my blood sugar spiked in the last 60 minutes. But the smartwatch reads 129. And once again, it does show the usual morning spike between 8 and 9 a.m. I'm almost certain this is wrong because my glucose never spike when I run. So let's see what my glucose sensor says. Yep, it shows my glucose has actually gone down in the last 60 minutes. And right now it's 83. So let's test my actual blood sugar with the meter, just to be sure. A moment of truth? Yeah, the blood sugar meter shows 88. So the smartwatch is way off, exactly as expected. It's almost like the watch runs its own algorithm and doesn't actually measure anything. Now, before I get to my final verdict, I have a big favor to ask you. You see, there is absolutely no benefit to me in doing this video and reviewing this watch. I don't think any of you are going to use my affiliate link to buy it. The company is not sending me anything ever again. And other companies probably won't line up to work with me. But I didn't make this video to make me money. I made it to save you money. And the only thing I ask in return is that you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to send a little extra love my way, you can check out my Patreon, where you get direct access to me and some bonus content. Now to be fair, this watch has a bunch of other features that I didn't test. So if you're buying it for those other features, it's your call. But when it comes to glucose testing, the results speak for themselves. It's not worth it. Now you may not know that your blood glucose meter can give you false readings too if you don't use the right technique. So make sure you watch this video next to learn the proper way to measure your blood sugar and learn about the biggest mistakes that people make when using a meter. I'll see you in that video. Ciao.